Hi, my name is Alex Ridgway, and we're going to be talking about Orbit Determination Toolkit, or ODTK. We're going to be talking about the Orbit Determination Problem first. The Orbit Determination Problem is to ingest raw tracking data, to perform orbit estimation, to provide results to stakeholders, and repeat for every day, for every orbit, for whatever your concept of operations is. So ingesting raw data, that raw data is raw tracking data from space-based trackers, from ground-based systems, really from anything that can track the motion of a spacecraft. From there, you have to fuse and process that data and perform orbit estimation so to know where your spacecraft was previously. And so that's what we call orbit determination or orbit estimation. We also need to uh, estimate the satellite's position, but we also need to estimate the uncertainty or covariance. So that's how well you know that spacecraft's position. The reason why we do that is so we can predict the future motion of the spacecraft. We need to know where that spacecraft is going to go, and that's starting off with the determination, then the prediction. We also need to calibrate our systems. We also need to estimate the environment affecting motion to understand a little bit more about drag and solar radiation pressure and, and the, the gravity model uh, updates. And then we need to take all that data and, and, and provide it to somebody, right? We need to provide it to our operational systems. We need to provide it to other stakeholders, maybe you know different customers, or just in general to understand where our spacecraft's going so that we can maybe run some predictive analysis to run some maneuver planning, run some where is my spacecraft gonna be in the future type analysis. So we're gonna provide that information to stakeholders. Those stakeholders could be other operators, they could be your operators, they could be government agencies, they could be whoever needs to know the future position of your spacecraft or other spacecraft that you're tracking. So we're gonna repeat, repeat, repeat. You're gonna continuously do it over time, over the days, over the months, over the years, and continuously uh, track that. So that's really the orbit determination problem. And now we're getting back to ODTK. ODTK solves that orbit determination problem. ODTK is an actively developed COTS product. It is flexible. It has a fully documented API. It is available on Windows fully as a desktop application. Uh, and it's also available on Linux through engine-based application. It is a, a non-user-friendly GUI, as an engineering-friendly GUI. It's a very simple, basic GUI, uh, but it's very effective. We have help system, it's validated, and it has a robust suite of reports and graphs. ODTK is operationally proven. It's been used on many different missions from the James Webb Space Telescope to GOI to IBEX mission to Messenger to many different geo satellites from CARI and other groups like JAXA. ODTK is one of the most powerful orbit determination tools out there. And so you see all of the different groups that operate satellites in space using ODTK. Some even have their own OD systems their own internal OD tools, but for those most important missions like the James Webb Space Telescope, they rely heavily on ODTK for that. So ODTK provides native sensor data fusion, so it can pull in different types of data. So if you have tracking data from a ground station mixed with tracking data from a satellite, you can mix that data together in a native way. It provides processing capabilities for traditional and non-traditional measurements. If you have a way to track and measure the location of a spacecraft, you can bring that into ODTK. It allows you to do multi-satellite processing, so you can process multiple satellites at the same time. And it can also process through maneuvers. So this could be a maneuver that you know about, that you've planned, or a maneuver that you don't know about is maybe non-cooperative or an uncooperative maneuver. You can actually process that with ODTK. So ODTK can process real and simulated tracking data. It can optimally produce a solution to provide the best possible covariance based off of your trackers themselves. So it does produce high precision orbits. This is showing the covariance or uncertainty of the spacecraft with the size of the spacecraft right in the center. This is visualized in SDK, but the data is from ODTK. So this is showing that we can use ODTK for all missions, not only LEO, MEO, GEO, but we can also use ODTK for lunar and cislunar, as well as interplanetary, 
as well as uh, Martian orbits, whatever orbit you have, you can bring that into ODTK and process data for it. Now we'll switch over to the tool and maybe do a quick demo of the tool itself. ODTK has a workspace where all of your graphs, reports will show up here. It also has an object browser. If you're familiar with SDK, it has a very similar object browser, similar structure with a child parent relationship all the way down from facilities to tracking systems to satellites and onboard instruments. If you double click on any one of these objects, you can see the properties listed here. There are many properties associated with, a, with the satellite here. Most importantly, the initial orbit state. So this is where it was at a specific time. And then after this por portion, we're gonna estimate the motion of the vehicle going forward. So there's a few different things that I like to point out. Most importantly, our filter. The filter is an extended common filter with variable process noise. This is a very powerful common filter that has been built, built up for many years and it's built specifically for space operations and space applications. So there are other filters out there, there are other tools out there, but this one's specifically built for space applications. This filter, filter is very powerful and it can process data very, very quickly and very effectively. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look and actually process some of the data. So we're gonna go here and actually show the measurement summary. And the measurement summary can tell us which satellites are in the data. So what we have here is four different sites. They are tracking the satellite, the simple satellite here. And you can see all of these are the contact times and measurements that we brought into the scenario. So this is one site called Guam has three measurements here has another two sets of measurements for those two separate passes. So what we have is a ground station tracking of a satellite in orbit, and we're gonna be processing this data. So what we're gonna be doing is running, selecting run of the filter, and it'll just take a, just a brief moment to, to calculate, and then we'll go and run the smoother, which refines the orbital state once the filter runs. So what we're gonna do is create another data product. This is called residual ratios. And we're gonna use the filter and run the residual ratio graph. The residual ratio graph shows all of the measurements that are processed within the system. ODTK has an autonomous data editing capability so that it only processes data that's within plus or minus three sigma for residual ratios. So all of this data has been processed and it's being accepted and it, it updated the state of the satellite. All the measurements that are outside of plus or minus three sigma are rejected and not used to estimate the orbital state. This could happen because you have noisy measurements. You could have had a maneuver that was uncalibrated or, or unseen, you could just be tracking the wrong spacecraft and pull measurements for that wrong spacecraft. So there's a lot of reasons why some measurements would fail. You could have also had a, a bad setup. So maybe you're, something went wrong with your setup and some of your measurements are now outside of that plus or minus three sigma. But most importantly, the measurements are accepted for the scenario and you can see for this pass, let's look at this one pass, they're generally spread out in the middle here and Gaussian distributed along that path. We could run other reports like histogram to see, but overall you can see that a lot of those measurements are accepted. So we can process these measurements in order to refine it and to understand the overall uncertainty of those systems. So what we're gonna do is look at position uncertainty to look at how uncertain or how certain we are about the position of our spacecraft. So I run this here. So what we're looking at is a position uncertainty graph of the output of ODTK to look at the accuracy that those four baseline tracking systems can produce as they're tracking that LEO satellite. So the overall uncertainty of the spacecraft 
generally is under that 50 meters in the cross track and radial direction, but it's over 100 meters in the in track direction, which is our velocity direction. This is expected to have a higher uncertainty because it's the velocity direction. So what, we're, what we did was actually process measurement data. We went in and ran the filter on that data and in order to create a good orbit estimation. Then we looked at the overall uncertainty of that estimation. How well and how well defined was that spacecraft's orbit? And that the answer was under 50 meters in most directions. So ODTK can do this for different measurement types, for different satellites, for different networks. It can process any different measurement that you can throw at it. It's very flexible and it's a full API. ODTK is a very powerful tool. If you want to learn more about ODTK, please contact us and we'll get you the right resources. Thank you so much.